Hi there, my name's Megan Wanderer. I'm a fine artist and a projection artist from Ohio. My work has been mentioned in Ohio Magazine, the Canton Repository, all about illumination, the Canton Light Festival that I recently participated in. It was eight weekends of January through February where I got to take this space and transform it into this. I was thrilled to be able to share my love of light art with the community. I'm also a featured artist and beta tester for a company called Lightform, who sells projection mapping products. I've been featured on their blog multiple times for my stage backdrops and also for the homeschooling that I did with my niece during COVID. I got to be her art teacher and it was wonderful. We learned all about the different kinds of painting and light painting. Here she is. She's being a mermaid. <laughs> So let's just back it up for just one second. In 2015, I started school at Kent State University. I was going for painting and I had no idea that the things I would be working on would end up being my earliest test subjects for projection and mapping. I started taking classes in the music department just for some fun and I ended up befriending a few of the students and was offered an opportunity to do stage design and some projection for them. Sounds great, except at this point I had never done digital art, I had never done anything with a projector, and I only had a few weeks to figure it out. I had no idea what I was doing, but <laughs> I'm a stubborn artist and I decided, hey, let's just figure this out. So I started using some Adobe products and I ended up putting them all in PowerPoint. I did this full show in PowerPoint. So how I started was I attended a few of their practices for this event. And what I did was I timed each song every time they practiced it, maybe 10 or so times. And then I took the average of how long that song was. And that's how long I made my video. It would probably have been smarter to use fade times and slide changes in PowerPoint. I would suggest doing that or having somebody manually hit the space bar to change it for you behind the scenes. If you don't have that luxury, fade times are great. Taking the averages of the songs, however, worked out perfectly. I could not have been more pleased at the perfect ending with the, the end note. I got really, really lucky. I did handmade animations using Af Adobe After Effects, and then I compiled them all together using Premiere, exported that, and used that file in PowerPoint. I don't know if that will help you, but just keep that in mind, that you can use a lot of different tools to make this work. You don't have to have the crazy expensive equipment. The very next semester was my last one. I knew I wanted to incorporate projection in my senior show so I decided to collaborate with the music department. We chose a few songs by a band called Lotus, and we actually built this entire stage from scratch. We used pipes and white fabric to build this screen behind there, and we built the risers, we set everything up, it was a crazy couple of days getting that ready, but the end result, I think, worked fabulously. We actually ran out of seating room. <laughs> Here we used a projector just mounted to the ceiling, and I taught myself a program which allowed me to mix these visuals in real time so I could go off the cues of the musicians and we could kind of play back and forth and it gave me that painting with light expressive quality to it. This is also where I learned how to live stream, which came in handy. We could have people from all over attend this show and not have to be in the room. Then in December 2018, I graduated. 
I got my bachelor's art, studio art. Since then, I've been fortunate enough to travel around with different bands all around Ohio. And I've gotten to participate in shows in many different kinds of venues. I'd played with lights for many different genres of music too. Classic rock, this was a Pink Floyd show. punk rock Christmas, a jazz gig where the Paradigm logo is painted on the wall and I just made it shift. I've done street festivals, community festivals. I have even been fortunate enough to do outdoor music festivals. I really dream of being able to do that again, and even on larger, larger scale. There's just something about working with music, and it brings people together, and you have cool stuff to look at. It changes the whole atmosphere, and I think that's why we work well together. You can use projection to fit any type of mood or environment. You're in charge. You can do anything. It's limitless. I've assisted on live streams, which has been an interesting experience. One of the most fun performances I've been able to be a part of was the Spiral Out Tool Ensemble. I was tasked with building a sculpture and then being able to projection map it to go along with the music of Tool. This is how big my sculpture was for scale. The sculpture was inspired by visionary artist Alex Gray, as you can see the third eye emblem on the forehead, which is one of his trademark symbols. I didn't want to do anything too literal for the backdrop, I just wanted to make a mood. I wanted you to really listen and think and experience this. Another incredible experience I've had is working with Trip Through Time. We covered Fleetwood Mac's Rumors album in its entirety at a historic theater. Here I am preparing the mapping of the architecture. And this is what it ended up looking like. We used the old movie screen for the background and I built two separate panels out of PVC pipe and sheet material for the two side screens. It was honestly an incredible experience because I put on this show, this group of us, we worked together and did it all on our own and somehow we got about 400 people to show up. Our first and last show was February of 2020 and the weekend after that, everything pretty much shut down due to COVID, so unfortunately, we have not gotten to perform again, but we are really looking forward to being able to come back strong in the future. There's nothing quite like running live visuals. The adrenaline, the moment, working back there with the lighting designer, making sure everything's going right. It's stressful, it's fun, and I honestly love it. But I also don't mind setting backdrops for practices here in a recording studio. I kind of set some ambiance for the jams. And sometimes I just like to make art out of sheet music. It might make it a little harder to read. <laughs> I 
I'll even make art out of your instruments. I just want a map on everything. This was a piece from 2019. It's a combination of oil paintings and projection mapping. I started playing around with more basic ideas, just trying to figure out how I could incorporate the things that I had learned from doing what I did with the music. How could I pull that into the art realm and combine my love for painting, and my love for light art? So I started. And then I started hand drawing animations and practicing them on top of paintings. Here's another three dimensional sculpture that I learned how to do this in real time. This isn't, you know, a video effect. I'm projecting this on here in real time. I think the hardest thing about projecting on sculptures is getting a good video of it. People don't believe you that it actually looks this intense and this vibrant. Now what I do is augmented reality, not to be confused with virtual reality. Virtual reality, you have to wear a headset, you have to be closed off from, quote, reality. Where augmented reality, I am, well augmenting, I am enhancing the reality that's in front of you. And I think that's more powerful because you're creating, changing, and enhancing the world around you. Mapping on art gives it a completely different feel. I love these pieces while they're on their own, but just that added little spark doesn't hurt. I've also s mapped on other people's art. This is a Frank Dale copy of a Vermeer. I've tried my hand at photography, projection photography also. I never had lighting for photography, but then I realized I could just use my projector, and it looks so cool. I've even taken this picture of my cat, Benjamin, and I woke up the next, put it on social media, and woke up the next morning and it had been shared about 100,000 times, so hopefully other people like it. <laughs> I've also made advertisements for local businesses. I even started making silly internet videos around Halloween time. I didn't really have Halloween costume, so I decided, hey, why not do what I love and play with these lights? We got some really crazy effects, and since we couldn't go to a Halloween party anyway, these were pretty perfect costumes. You can also decorate for other holidays, like Christmas. Or if you like, if you're a gamer, you can just hang out and split screen or, like I do, use a couple projectors and play your favorite game. Now, for your stage design. I would highly recommend back projecting on the far back, like, screen. That way you don't have to contend with shadows, you have people walking in front of it, it's it'll be so much easier to do it that way. As for the smaller panels up front, you can still do mapping in a way while only using PowerPoint. 
before I use the tools that I have now, I actually use masking tape in front of the projector to block off the areas I did not want lit. That could be useful. Depending on if your actors are going behind these screens would determine whether rear projection or front projection would be better. So let's say we are working on this scene. It says, the limits of my cell are as such, four and a half meters by five. There's one window against the w far wall, a door, very strong, to protect me from autograph hounds. So ideally, I would start this scene with almost a literal depiction of this cell. But I would not leave it that way. Think about how you could blend it into something more abstract the more that the character goes on talking about how they feel about this. How can you, how can you use color and line to convey emotion without having to rely on a physical space? How can you tell the actor's or the character's headspace through abstraction? So for example, since they laid out specifics about the cell, I wanted to give the viewers a sense of space where we were for real. But gradually, as our character starts talking about the grand treatment that he's been given, being almost celebritized during all of this, I wanted it to change into something more open. Something that was more Parisian party. So it could easily be faded into the next scene, a literal party. But it also portrays the headspace and the feeling of our character. Feeling recognized, feeling important. And this is just a quick example. This would need a lot of refinement before it actually went live. But I wanted you to get the idea that you didn't need to make it a cell for the whole time. It can change and progress through the story, through the mood. Projection has been a relatively new but extremely important part of my life. I couldn't imagine what I'd be doing right now without it. It's like a blank canvas, but everything is your canvas. You can make art and it can be long lasting or it could last a few seconds. You can do anything you want with this. you can come up with the craziest of schemes and actually pull it off. You just have to know your tools and be stubborn and confident enough to do it. Thanks.